Hi everyone, Jonathan Williamson again from cgcookie.com, and I wanted to go ahead and give you an additional demonstration of the Contours retopology tool that we released earlier today. So far the response has been overwhelmingly positive and we can't thank you enough for that. But one thing that I wanted to go ahead and do was give you a little bit of a more in-depth demonstration for how Contours fits into an existing workflow. Since Contours is a bit of a, a niche tool as far as the retopology process goes, it's not, it, it's not able to do the entire process, although it's definitely the first step towards that, as if you look at our development roadmap linked in the announcement post and whatnot, we do have several different things that we are planning to actually create that complete retopology package, including a poly strip tool, poly patch fill, and some others. But for the time being, until that development can happen, which by the way, all of that development is fueled entirely by your support. All of the code, even though maybe this wasn't clear at the initial announcement, is being released as GPL, meaning that it's open source, and then we're using all proceeds from the tool to go right back into development so that we can pay Patrick, who's doing an incredible job for his coding, and be able to just continue developing the tool further to fill those other areas that Contours doesn't currently fill, and go ahead and improve the code base, improve the the quality of the tool, and of course, continue providing support to every one of you that are using it. But before we can get to that point where we have the complete Rootopo package, we've got to go ahead and use it within an existing workflow for the Blender tool. And so that's what I want to show you right now. So I've got the Swampler model again from Jeepster or done by Jeepster for the Ancient Beast project. And what I want to do is just show you a little bit more of the process that I would use to retopologize this guy with the contours tool and our existing modeling tools. So what I would do basically is number one, I would start with the contours since it's very, very quick and it can get me a lot of the process done very quickly. And basically what we're going to try and do in this video, you know, we'll keep it fairly short, you know, try and keep it about 20 to 30 minutes or so. Basically I'm going to retopo most of his arm, try and do some of the chest, go on down the back and then maybe do the tail. So it's not gonna be the whole thing. This is definitely not an easy project to retopologize. You know, what with some of the complexity and the shape in here with the strangeness in the shape or an uh, irregularity with the knuckles and things like that. So it's definitely something you'd wanna spend a lot of time on, but we can make a pretty good headway using contours and our existing tools. So number one, uh, like I mentioned in the original video, I prefer to work in orthographic mode when I'm retopologizing. Re Since I'm not creating any forms that don't exist, I don't need to worry about the skew from orthographic mode where if I were actually creating this guy from scratch, if I were to do it in orthographic, I would have a false impression of what he actually looks like because I wouldn't have the perspective applied. But since our form already exists, we can just basically map our topology on there exactly and it makes it really easy. But again, that's just personal preference for me. Uh, I know a lot of artists like to do retopo in orthographic or perspective mode, but orthographic is what I like. So we're gonna start and I'm gonna start drawing contours. So we're gonna start this and we'll just go ahead and start right here with his bicep area, maybe right about in here. And right now by default, we're using 10 segments. I'm gonna go ahead and boost that up to 12 just by hitting the plus key twice. That'll make sure that we've got enough to kind of account for the detail and whatnot in his arm. And then we'll draw on another one. And then real quick, I'm gonna rotate around to try and get a nice angle here on his elbow, basically where I'm perpendicular to his elbow. And I'm just gonna draw one right through there just to ensure that I can get that angle quickly and nicely. Plus then I can also add in say an additional loop here to account for some of the joint. I can maybe rotate this one a little bit, just kind of relax it up just a bit. And then I'll add in another one here at the base of the elbow, you know, using the rule of three as a minimum for joints to make sure we are able to get proper deformation. And then I'll start kind of filling in some more about like this, trying to keep the angle of the loops basically perpendicular to the actual arm itself. So I'll just put in a few more like this and we'll go right up to basically the base of the palm. We're not gonna do the hand in this video. Uh, it's more finicky than anything. It just takes time and it's not so much the tools that you're using as just your eye for the topology. And at this point, I'm gonna go and hit enter, generate that portion of the mesh. That gets me a really good starting point. You can see how nicely it's following the shape here. You know, we've got that twist in his forearm really nicely. And I can just bounce right into edit mode. And you'll notice that I'm using another feature here called hidden wire. Now I'm using Blender 2.68 development. So this is technically 2.69 in the making. Uh, and this is one of the first features that has been added in 2.69. You can go ahead and get it just by grabbing a development build either from builder.blender.org or compiling it yourself. And it just makes 
your visualization really nice in the in edit mode when you have hidden wire combined with x-ray and on x x-ray on because you notice that i don't see any of my vertices behind here like i would in edit mode but i can still see my original surface really well so that works great i'm going to go ahead and select this edge loop now and i can extend it using contours noting that the vertex count is set because i already have a loop selected so i'll just pull this guy in here and then i'll do another one noting that when you have a loop selected, it won't preview the mesh until you have two loops drawn. Uh, maybe in the future we can bring that down to, to just one loop if you have an existing loop, but for the time being, that'll work. Okay, I'll hit enter, and that extends that. And at this point, this is a good time to start bringing in some of Blender's regular modeling tools. So I'll start by saving my file, and then I'm just gonna make sure that snapping is set to face, that snapping is enabled, and that snapping to other objects is enabled. And then I'll start by defining some of like the bicep or the, uh, the deltoid area. So I might just grab, say, these three loops. Or actually, you know what? Let's take this. I'm going to hit V to split this vertex apart. We'll bring it down here. Then I'll take this one like this. And that's just going to help kind of split that area because now I can just hit F and bring that up there. I'll do the same thing right here. So I'll hit V, rip that vertex apart, do this here, and then pull that. And so this way, this face loop is now going to wrap around the base of the deltoid right there. And then I can take this, I'll take this edge, and we'll just extrude it right around the muscles here, trying to keep the, the loops or the, the faces fairly square. And so you can see here where this, this would be a perfect case for one of the next tools that's on our roadmap, which is basically the poly strip sketching, where what ideally what we're going to be able to do and this is a tool that is going to be developed with the a lot of the proceeds from from contours i'd like to be able to just basically select an edge draw out a single stroke basically like this have the mesh automatically generated along here showing the preview just like contours and have it then evenly subdivided to then basically put an edge something like this along the length of that stroke and so that's going to be the poly strips tool that we're looking to integrate uh, should be a really, really nice one for kind of laying down the topology on things like this. So I would just start basically doing this using the, you know, our existing tools. Uh, then I can maybe bring some of this right in here, just using the F2 add-on, which of course is bundled with Blender. And then I can wrap some of this around here, just basically following the muscle flow with everything that I do. It looks like we got a loose vertex right there. So we'll just, we'll pull this guy back, bring him back to where he belongs. Sometimes that happens with surface snapping. Another reason to try and avoid surface snapping in the future. Again, that's just you know one of the, the reasons that we've kind of spent all this time on the development is that we are trying to basically improve the tools that, that already exist in such a way that we can get around uh, you know, many of the, the pitfalls of these tools. And surface glitches or surface snapping glitches are just one of those things. So then I'll kind of continue bringing these around. And maybe at this point, I'll take these and I might extrude this up here, extrude over here. And we're not gonna follow all of the muscle topology here in the back uh, or the muscle forms, you know, we'll try and get the majority of it. Some of the some of the muscles here are a little bit strange, but that's all right. So, you know, I might take this one up here, this one here, roughly follow this. Might be nice if we had say another loop right about in here. So we can just kind of put that in and then we'll do this. We'll take this over here, we'll add another edge loop there. And then why don't we fill in those faces again, just using the F2 add-on. So it makes that really, really quick. That is definitely one tool that is just absolutely phenomenal for Blender and has definitely sped up my workflow a lot. Uh, again, that's the F2 add-on that's bundled with Blender, but you'll, you'll have to enable it if you haven't already. So then we can just kind of bring these around and around here. And that starts to look pretty good. I think these will rotate around here. We'll go and bring them right up to the clavicle since we have a muscle right in here within the pectorals that attaches to basically the thir this third of the clavicle. And then why don't we add in another loop just about like that. And then we can kind of fill that there and fill that there. And why don't we actually add in one more loop here and then we can basically just slide these across to kind of even them out. And that then allows us to get the pit right here where there's actually a pit uh, from the the lack of or yeah the basically the gap between the muscles there so there you saw another surface snapping glitch but now I might take some of these and I'm just going to extrude them down like this 
try and basically start following the, the shape of the pectoral muscles somewhere in that range. Oh, and add in, or actually, you know what? Instead of this, let's pull this vertex back here and then we'll add in another loop here and then we can just kind of merge these two together. Bring these down like that. And then we can add in another loop there. So again, just starting to kind of put in the shape of the pectorials. And then we can start bringing this around here and around there. And I'm not going to do the underside for now, but we definitely could start doing that. So, so you can start to see where we're, where we're kind of going with this. Uh, it's definitely a, it's a manual process, but hopefully with the development from uh, contours and things like that, we can really improve a lot of this workflow to make it really, really fast and kind of follow that same uh, workflow and I guess you'd say paradigm that we've set with with the contours tool as far as you know showing your mesh previews showing you exactly what you're going to get as you start adding in strokes and whatnot and really one of the goals is to basically allow the the artist whether that's you me or someone else to be able to work very very fluidly and you know basically worry less about how they're adding the topology and more just on the flow of the topology. You know, that's one of the things that I personally really, really like about the contours tool is that it enables us to basically just draw on what we want and know that it's gonna be pretty accurate. Uh, and so rather than having to go in here and start kind of filling edges and connecting faces, or I guess I should say connecting edges and filling faces would be more accurate, uh, you know, to really just enable us to just say, hey, I want my mesh to go this direction and then let Blender do the rest of the work for you as far as connecting all the dots and making sure that everything is where you want it. Uh, so that's that's kind of the goal with it. Uh, it's got a ways to go, but it's definitely getting there. And so now you can see, I mean, you know, I'm starting to fill in this area. I'm trying to keep my topology really clean going around here. So you can imagine that if this were a strip tool, I'd basically just draw in a line about like that and then just, or excuse me, about like that, you know, extruding a single edge here and just let that kind of go. Um, but even just extruding manually, it works just fine. So now I can just continue filling in all of these areas and we're basically, um, basically at a stopping point. Again, I'm not gonna do this entire thing. Uh, it's definitely a long, long process to do it all, but hopefully you can start to see how you can kind of start integrating this in with your existing workflow. But just to demo a little bit further, let's go and do a bit of the tail. So you you watched me do the majority of the tail earlier, so I don't need to do the whole thing again. But what you didn't see was the area around the tail. So why don't we just do this? Let's draw one in here. We'll draw one in here, another one here, another one here. And then why don't we do that? And then let's go and increase the vertex count once more to 12, and then we'll hit enter. And what you would probably wanna go ahead and do at this point, you notice it's not quite centered. So let's just select everything on one half. We'll hit X and then we'll select these two edge loops. We'll just hit S, X, and zero. Although we wanna be sure that snapping is turned off before we do that, or we're going to just annihilate our results. And there we go. So it's basically exactly where it was, but it's just a little bit, uh, now it's more centered and I could go ahead and just go in here, add in a mirror modifier, enable clipping, and be on my way. So now I would just start extruding some of these areas like this. I'll fill that, I'll fill that. And then right here where the form changes, goes down to the buttocks and whatnot, I would go ahead and continue this flow down rather than continuing this arc around. And so then I can bring this right around like this and begin forming these shapes and so probably I'll just bring that down like that. I'm not completely sure how, I, how I'd lay down that topology, but that'll be close enough for the time being. You know, I can maybe take this, kind of put down some, some key loops about like this, and then maybe add in another one right about there. And then again, I'll continue filling in those areas as I kind of figure out exactly how I want to put down that topology, because I really don't at the moment. You know, I'm just kind of going with what I see in the forms. But some more things I can see is, you know, I want to go ahead and take this out like this. I'll take this out here and begin wrapping it around like this and then start bringing it down to the base of the leg. About like this. 
Gonna go in right there along the inside of the leg, actually. And then before long, I could actually, if I make a full loop here, which I will go ahead and do, I can then connect it with the, the contours for the complete thing. So I'll bring that right there. And then let's go ahead and we'll just connect this here. That should work well. And again, this topology may not be ideal. You know, some of it I may rework, but that's pretty common in a Retopo workflow is to kind of, you know, you'll work through a lot of it and then you'll make some changes and then you'll work through it again and whatnot. But this ought to be fairly close to what we want. This way we can pull in kind of near the thigh muscles and whatnot. Um, and okay, so now I can select this edge loop and now I can bring this down for a contour. So I'll connect this. Noticing my contours are set where my vertex count at 14 and I can just draw that across there and then that across there. It's automatically detected. And then let's just go ahead and let's cut in the knee really quickly like we did before. And then we'll put in uh, the immediately adjacent ones. And for the knee like this, I'm gonna go ahead and use a few more than three, three loops. You know, we might go ahead and do something more like that just to be sure we've got plenty of geometry in there to define those areas. And all right, so I think that this will basically do it. Let's cut that in. We'll hit enter, automatically generates our mesh. And there we have it. So again, it's not the complete model, but that's the workflow that I would use then to go ahead and do the entire thing very, very quickly. And noticing, you know, even though Contours doesn't fill the entire workflow, the speed at which I'm able to do things like the arms and the legs just gives me all that much more time. And in this case, it was probably, you know, anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on, you know, the, the details one on and how close I wanted to get it. Uh, but the time that I save doing these is just more time that then I can put into the really complex areas like the chest, the waistline, uh, the, the hips, the face, all of those areas then just allow me to get more focus and make sure that my model is really good in those areas that are really, really crucial. But again, hopefully with the the proceeds from Contours, then we're able to push all of that directly right back into further development to begin developing the tools that are going to integrate for some of these other areas like the strip fill tool, the poly patch, and a few others that we've already got on the roadmap. Uh, if you have any feedback on the roadmap or anything like that, I do encourage you to go ahead and put your thoughts in the thread. Again, you can find a link to that from our announcement post or from the product download page. Uh, and feel free to go ahead and leave your feedback there. We'd definitely like to hear it, and we'll definitely be uh, having more updates soon. So thanks for watching.